What is a brace plate heat exchanger, or BPHE? In the next slides, you will learn more about the technology behind our products. The BPHE is the preferred technology in Europe today. Compared with other technologies, it is in its growth stage, and it is evolving constantly to deliver new and better systems. Connections are normally located on the front of the heat exchanger, but they can also be located on the back. During production, the channel plates are pressed together with a brazing material, such as copper foil. Pressing creates a corrugated surface in a herringbone pattern. The direction of the herringbone pattern is switched for every other plate, creating channels. End plates and connections are added. And finally, the units are stacked on a brazing plate before being inserted into the furnace. During the vacuum brazing process, a brazed joint is formed at every contact point between the channel plates. The units are then tested for internal and external leaks with helium. They are also pressure tested at 50% above the maximum design pressure. The units are then labeled. Copper is the standard brazing material and is used for all sizes and models. It has a melting point of 1,083 degrees Celsius and a maximum operating temperature of 225 degrees Celsius. Nickel can only be used for our B-small and some of our B-medium heat exchangers. It is approved for 350 degrees Celsius at a maximum operating pressure of 10 bar and has a melting point of 1,453 degrees Celsius. The principle of the heat exchanger is simply a transfer of energy. A gas or a liquid transfers its heat to another medium without making direct contact. Heat exchangers can have two or more circuits. The secondary circuit is always the cold side and always has one more flow channel than the primary side. The first and last channels in a BPHE therefore always contain the secondary fluid surrounding the primary channel. The secondary circuit also has a lower pressure drop because it contains one more channel. The plates can be arranged in various ways. One pass is the basic arrangement, but the plates can also be arranged in a multi-pass configuration. Examples of other arrangements include dual and dual over two pass. The flow in a BPHE can be countercurrent or co-current. Countercurrent is preferred because it is more efficient. The heat transfer coefficient depends on the fluid and the flow, but these conditions are set by the customer. However, the performance is determined by the BPHE's channel plate pattern. The high theta pattern, with a high chevron angle, is a standard available in all sizes. It has a high thermal length for maximum effectiveness and with a higher pressure drop. The increased turbulence improves heat transfer. The low theta pattern, with a low chevron angle, has a low thermal length. A mix of high and low theta is used to achieve intermediate thermal performance. In a high theta application, the temperature program requires a greater area, achieved with longer plates, multi-pass, or a high theta pattern. Furthermore, results in a higher pressure drop. In a low theta application, the temperature program requires a smaller area, achieved with shorter plates, single pass, or a low theta pattern. A PPHE with a mixture of high and low theta plates is known as an asymmetric PPHE. Our patented asymmetric design improves heat transfer which increases the system's thermal performance. It reduces the pressure drop, makes smaller demands on pumps, and increases the unit's mechanical strength. It also reduces emissions, enabling smaller system solutions. Pressure drop always accompanies heat transfer, but not all of it is always necessary. While pressure drop is essential for the heat transfer performance, for the best performance, the connection must not generally account for more than one-third of the total pressure drop. The pressure drop creates turbulence, which is essential for good performance. It creates the heat transfer coefficient and reduces the risk of fouling. Thermal fit is the most fundamental parameter. For applications that are thermally too long, the pressure drop tends to be acceptable, but there is a risk of oversurfacing, which impairs performance. For applications that are thermally too short, there is often a good fit in terms of oversurfacing. However, it does not take advantage of the maximum allowed pressure drop, which impairs performance. Combining zero oversurfacing with the maximum pressure drop achieves the desired performance at the lowest cost. To achieve the optimal design and avoid a large heat transfer surface when the temperature approach, the logarithmic mean temperature difference, or LMTD, is low, an example about 1000 European Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating, or ES, 
EER is recommended. This is a generic way of using the design parameters to achieve the optimized area to avoid low channel velocity and low Reynolds number with their associated increased risk of channels being blocked. This is an example of how an ESEER calculation can optimize the heat transfer area. In the first case, with an LMTD of 1000, the heat transfer area is up to 207 square meters. If you apply the ESEER methodology to the same case, the LMTD will be 1.4000 and the area is reduced to 107 square meters.